Hello and welcome to uh, the tutorials for this semester for Econ 2x03, Econ 2g03. Um, about me, I'm, my name is Grant Gibson. I am a PhD student in the economics department. I've been doing these tutorials for, um, I guess, two and a half years now, or two years now. Um, anyways, this semester, since it's an evening course and you have no tutorials, I'm making these uh, videos on the internet to hopefully achieve the same purpose, if not do a little bit better than I've done in the past, um, and at your convenience instead of having me in class. Uh, so if you have any questions pursuant to these videos, um, I will try to monitor the YouTube comments, but it's better to email me. And you can email me at g-i-b-s-o-n-g-a master.ca and as I will be using these videos for multiple semesters I'm gonna leave it up to uh, uh, your professor to tell you my office hours of course this is only for James Bruce's section that I will be holding office hours other people have come to see me and if I'm not busy I will help them but of course I'm only obligated to professor Bruce's students uh, so anyways how to use these videos which is point three is that I'm gonna basically flip to the next page and there's gonna be some questions. I invite you to try them on your own. I will then write out all the answers so you can see whether you got them right. And then I will proceed to solve the problems with you using this basically pencil app that I can write into the journal with. And so you can follow along and see where you got the wrong answer or you know listen to my ramblings about why the answer is what it is. Uh, of course, if you get all the answers right, then, I mean, odds are you know what you're doing, and you can probably skip the rest of the video and go have an ice cream. Okay, so this is how I'm going to do it. Uh, basically, this is the first page of problems I'd like you to try. So if you'd pause the video and solve all the following problems for X, and I will resume speaking after about five seconds from now. Okay, so if you didn't try them on your own, um, I last saw you five seconds ago. If you did, hopefully you uh, knew what you were doing. Uh, in either case, I'm going to write out the answers. So the answer to number one is 11 equals x. The answer to number two is 7 equals x. Uh, the answer to number three is that x equals 12 over 5y. Uh, if you tried to solve for y, there's basically an infinite number of solutions that would satisfy that equation, so you cannot get no definite solution for that, merely a relationship. Uh, this one is x equals minus 1, comma, x equals 3. Those both those solutions are necessary to get the answer. One of both is not necessary is not good enough. Uh, and this one is x equals four plus or minus square root of thirty one. Okay, so if you got all those, see you later. If not, all right, let's go. So for the first one, uh, this is the basically the most basic algebra you'll you'll see. We have 3x plus 16 minus 16 equals 49 minus 16. 3x, right, these 16s are going to cancel out. We'll just subtract the 16 from 49. That gives us 33. Uh, and then we'll divide both sides by 3. And we'll wind up with x equals 11. Okay, over here, uh, since these two like based terms, are multiplied together, we can add the exponents, right? So I have 1 over 2 plus 3 over 4 is equal to 5 over 4. Okay, so that's going to be my new exponent. So now x to the 5 over 4 equals 11.386. Okay, I'm going to take both sides to the exponent 4 over 5. Right, and since I have an exponent taken to an exponent, I can multiply these two together. I'll get 20 over 20, or just 1. 
So I'll be left with x equals 7. Okay, over here, just straightforward, as I mentioned as I was writing out the answer, you can't actually solve this for a definite solution because anything where um, 12y equals 5x is a, is a legitimate solution. So we just simplify it to x equals 12 over 5y. And once you get going on some applied problems, you'll see that you'll often have something to plug in for y that you can solve for. Okay, so this one here, we have the uh, third root of x squared equals 9. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is take both sides to the third power. Okay, I'm not actually going to calculate 9 to the third power, it's 700 and something, because the next thing I have to do, right, that third power is going to cancel out this root sign, so I'll have x squared equals 9 cubed. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So square root of x squared equals square root of 9 cubed. And since I've taken the square root of something, I have to have the plus or minus, because either negative 27 or positive 27 will satisfy this equation. Okay, oftentimes in economics we only deal with the positive number or the greater of two numbers, so uh, you can afford a few slip-ups, but mathematically speaking it is positive or minus 27. Okay, so this next problem, um, the easiest way to solve this is to make this into a standard parabola and solve for the zeros. Okay, so the solution method here is to factor this. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to be negative 3, yet add up to be negative 2. Okay, so I make that to be uh, negative 3 and positive 1. Okay, so in factoring, okay, and if you expand that, you should get that that is the original function x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Um, of course, so the, zero, so the things that would make this function 0 are if x was negative 1, right? So this first term would be 0, or if x was 3, and then this second term becomes 0. Okay, part f is a little more difficult. Um, at least in my past experience, people have told me it's more difficult. Uh, the idea here is that we're going to complete the square, but we have a square term, or squareable term on one side and none on the other side. Okay? So since 25 is a perfect square, I could subtract, or sorry, add 3x to both sides. Um, let's not do that. Let's actually subtract 9 to make the perfect square here. So x squared minus 8x plus 16, right, equals, and then if we subtract 9 from one side, we have to subtract 9 from the other side, equals 31, okay? Now I can factor this. It's a perfect square, as I mentioned, so I'll have x minus 4, x minus 4, if I'd factored it this way. Uh, I'd prefer to just write that out as x minus 4 squared equals 31. Okay, and let's take the square root of both sides, remembering that just like in part D, we have to have plus or minus. We'll have x minus 4 equals plus or minus root 31. And then from there, it should be fairly straightforward to see that x is then 4 plus or minus square root of 31. Of course, you can solve all of these past two problems with the quadratic equation if you have something equal to zero. Uh, the quadratic equation being, of course, negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And if that doesn't make sense to you, then you should look it up on the internet somewhere. Um, there'll be a much better explanation than I can offer in the time limit that YouTube constrains me to. So I will see you for the math review part two, which refers to calculus.